waiting for the signal here. Okay. Here we are. Welcome, Entrepreneur Speaker Series community. We are here with another phenomenal episode today on the Thursday for all your entrepreneurs out there trying to build a business, trying to scale to that next level. We brought in a phenomenal guest. And I'm going to introduce you to Bella Cruz, guys. Bella Cruz is a number one best-selling author and also a keynote speaker. She's highly sought after because she's a transformational executive consultant. And I'm excited today to ask Bella some questions in how she became the person she is, to, she is today because we are all about giving back to the community. Right, so so let's give a warm <laughs> welcome to our guest today, Bella Cruz. Welcome to the show. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm so honored to be here with you today. Thank you, and to Christina. How are y'all doing? <laughs> we are phenomenal, and we're excited, uh, Bella, because we always admire entrepreneurs who are really, you know, hustling and building a business and impacting people. This is what this show is about. So we're excited to, to ask you a couple of questions. Um, but Bella, if, if, if you would be able to describe us, how would you describe your, your business and what is your purpose behind what you do today? Well, my platform is leadership. I've been in the corporate world for about 30, almost 25 years or so. So what I basically do is I help leaders uh, get unstuck, you know, and connect with their employees. That's really the bottom line. I've worked with many, many people and they all have the same problems, communication, team building, connecting with the employees. I think communication and team building are some of the biggest issues with, with leaders, you know, and what I'm doing right now is I'm writing a new book called Accountability Performance. And um, it's a it's about kind of accountability in the workplace because so many leaders, they have, um, you know, they, it's sometimes hard to connect with the employees. They get really busy with their jobs. I'll give you an example. I have a, you know, I work with many people and I, I'm walking down the hall and I hear this one employee say, you know what, I'll take a bullet for the boss because they were leaving and they were saying what a great boss this was. But then I'm in an HR office with another one and you hear this employee outside the door and they're saying, fire me, please fire me. I can't stand working for my boss. So, you wow. know, you, you have two extreme yeah. leadership styles. And so a lot of it is just something they just don't know yet. Sometimes it's just they're so busy. Sometimes, you know, people go into a position and they don't really train them before they get there. They were great at their job. They were great at project management. But when it comes to connecting people, it's a skill. It's a skill. And everybody wants to connect with someone before they'll trust them. You have to connect with people before they trust you. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And so can you can can we take you bella can we take you a little bit back to memory lane because it's obvious that today you run a successful company and and you're impacting people at the highest level but before you got to this position what was bella cruz doing before like what what drove you into this direction would you would you be willing to share a little bit of your story yeah i i you know i think everybody rob everybody has a story in their life you know and, yeah. and uh, one of mine was that my my identity was stolen by a family member i mean can you believe this a family member stole my identity and and um wow. i didn't know it at the time but i was at a point in my life where i had just graduated from the university and i was getting ready to go into this big job and at that time you know and i couldn't get a job and all of a sudden I'm homeless. I mean, after months of trying to look for a job, applying for jobs everywhere, you know, I became homeless. I lost my home. I lost my children, had to go find somewhere to live. And wow. it was, it's not a great thing or a great feeling. It, it lasted seven years, to be honest with you. Wow. But you know what? God has a plan for everything. And yeah. so what happened after that was I found out that a family member that had gone to federal prison so my identity. And at that time, back then, the technology wasn't like it is now. So, you know, I went through a lot. But you know what I did after like the first year? I didn't have any money. So I would go to the library and I would I would read and I started educating myself on. I came from a very poor family, so I didn't know. But don't get me wrong. I know how to I always ate with a fork and a spoon. But I just like to say that story because one time I was in line and <laughs> I was in line at a banquet and. 
you know, uh, this person comes, I went straight for the food, okay? I didn't go and say, hey, welcome, you know, congratulations. Yeah. I didn't know any better. I'd never been through anything like that. Straight for the food. And this one gentleman comes up to me and says, hey, Bella, you know, I know I know you're really hungry, you know, by God's grace, you did this. He goes, but, you know, you're really supposed to go and, and greet the guests first. So, you know, during this time, I started, you know, searching and I was trying to find out what was wrong, but I didn't know at that time why I was not finding a job. But I started reading. I learned how, how I learned about etiquette, about you know how to set a table, how to eat with a knife and fork. The best way I can describe that is Leonardo DiCaprio and the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where he says, yeah. Which fork do I use? Yes. <laughs> so I was. I started doing that. I started learning about music. You know, I was interested. Not one of my favorite songs is by. Eric Sinatra, I didn't know who that was. You know, I, I discovered Louis Armstrong, Beautiful. Billie Holiday. That, that's that's my genre. Oh, I, love I love it. I love it. I love that genre. I also love the classical movies. I learned who Gene Kelly was. You know, all these wonderful classical movies as well. I learned about art. Now, I'm not an expert or anything, but I can, you know, just the other day I was walking by somebody's office and I said, hey, that looks like a Monet. And they're like, it started an entire conversation just because I recognized that that painting was by Monet. And, you know, I'm not an expert, but at least now I can toggle between topics. And that's what I did when I was homeless. And I didn't know that all of that information was going to change my life and that I was going to continue to use it. So what I like to encourage, I know that we all go through different things and I can't tell you why things happen in your life. Yeah. All I know that at some point in everybody's life, there's going to be a storm. And in my storm, I chose to not, I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I learned how to cry during that storm, but I educated myself not knowing that I was going to need all that later on in life because I knew that at some point it would end. And that goes back to your faith. So that's what I did during that time. And then that's when I started learning new things. And, and, and you know, when you go through things like that, it makes you stronger and yeah. you have your, your passion, you know, gets bigger your dreams get bigger because now you know when you get to the next storm, you're going to get through it. It's going to end. Ab absolutely. Hey, and Bella, and, and I appreciate you for, for sharing this story because I can imagine that this was a very impactful and profound time in your life, right? This is, this is really, this has been a very challenging time. But I'm curious, what was the one drive for you that you you found yourself in this in, under these circumstances and it has it, it was easy to just blame outside circumstances to say hey this happened and that happened but yet here you are you chose to to look forward rather than backwards C can you share with us especially 2020 right this has been a challenging year for a lot of entrepreneurs um what what made you stay optimistic what made you look forward into opportunity opportunity thinking rather than to to stay stuck in the circumstances well one of the things that i've always learned in life and i didn't learn this early in my life and i wish i would have but i always looked at failures i look at them as opportunities to shift direction. It's like your internal GPS telling you, you know what, this is just not where you're supposed to be going. Change your shift, Sh change your direction. And one of the biggest things that kept me going was my faith because I personally know who God is. And I know that he get, he created me with a destiny. And I knew that at this point it was, I, like I said, I don't know why these things happen, but what you do in the storm has a lot to do with what you're gonna do when you get out. And I like to I like to explain that as a little ship that's tossing back and forth, just being thrown everywhere in a storm. But if you survive that storm and faith is what got me through it because I know who God is and I know that he created me with a destiny and that's what I hung on to. I, I knew I was created for more. I knew that at some point this was gonna be over and I, and I knew that I was gonna come out of it. And so I like to tell this story. I make a presentation on this storm warrior is where you go in as a little ship and you're being tossed back and forth, back and forth. And yes, the water's going to come in, but you don't let it get in the ship, right? In your yeah. heart. 
And so all the storms are pounding against your heart. And it's a time of reflection because you're going to be in there for a while. And so at some point you do come to a realization of, you know, reflecting, why am I here? You know, and then I like to compare it at the very end where if you got through that storm and you hung on to your faith and you focused on your purpose that, you know what, I'm going to come out of this. This is something that's just, it, I'm, I have to look at the lessons instead of the pain. And you know what? You're going to come out of there like an aircraft carrier. And now those waves and that storm can no longer shift you like that little boat when you went in. And I like to tell people, I like to tell people to imagine in front of them like three or four aircraft carriers that are in front of you. And now you're coming out of that storm and now you're in a new league and now you're going to follow and join that team. Yeah. Instead of the little storm. So that's the best way I could describe it. You know, if you're going yeah. in as a little ship and either you're going to be thrown out of the storm, not learn anything from it and be shipwrecked again and have to start all over, or you're going to go through that storm and you're going to hang on. You're going to hang on because you know, you were created with a great purpose in your life. You know, this is not the end. What am I going to learn from this? What do I have to reflect on? And one of the most important things that you need to do, Rob, is forgive that storm. Yeah, beautiful. And and I think you explained that very well, Bella. And, and I like how you said to have faith, right? Faith in, in, in the greater good, whether you believe in God or in the universe, or also faith in yourself that you are here with a purpose. So especially in 2020 and i get this all the time from all the the, the clients and the, the the students that go through through my systems where there's doubt there's a lot of doubt exists and i feel that doubt and fear it stops people usually from taking the actions to move forward so if, if you would address this challenge among the entrepreneurial community Bella, if, if if you know that doubt and fear is a, a big factor in the lives of people how would, how would you advise them that if, if they want to make a decision to move forward anyway, even though the circumstances are not right at the moment, what is the best advice that you could give them so people can hang on to their faith to make a change? Well, this is how I like to put it. Fear is scary and we all go through fear. Every single person goes through fear. But when there's fear, I look at it as an opportunity for something new that's coming in my life and I just don't know what it is yet. And so I embrace the learning factor, the self-development. Yeah. You have to just move into it and turn that fear into opportunity. And I know sometimes it's hard to do. I know there's pain. There's going to be pain in that. But you know what? We all experience fear. But I like to look at it and I like to tell people, look at fear as an opportunity that's coming in your life to grow, learn, and help others. You've got to go through that. You've got to embrace it. It's all it is, is just not knowing yet what it is, not knowing where you are, where you're going. But when you embrace it and you step into it, the fear goes away and you feel so much better when you come out of it because now you've grown it's it's a growing process and yeah. that, that's all it is is the fear of the unknown beautiful yeah and very very powerful very profound guys because fear is it's not real right fear that is something that exists in the mind now if you act upon those fears by staying put staying stuck or not moving forward right that's self-created now, on the other hand, if fear, right, if you recognize, you become aware of your fear, but then like Bella mentioned, go ahead anyway, have faith that it's all going to work out for you. Now, that's where the growth and process progress lives. Now, I want to switch gears a little bit, uh, Bella, because I know that currently you have used those lessons, right, to, to build a program, to build a framework to help some of these entrepreneurs and the clients that you serve. What is the number one common challenge that you find among all those clients that you're currently helping? Is, is there like a common team that you usually find that people get stuck? <laughs> yeah, I think that a lot of it has to do with them connecting with people 
and uh, knowing exactly where they need to be because sometimes people are fulfilling a life by just existing and our purpose has to do with passion and so many people just don't know what their purpose is or they're afraid to step into it like you were saying they're afraid to step into it so a lot of times it's just getting stuck finding out what your current state is where you are where you want to go and what i do in the coaching process is i identify help them identify their current state where they are and then from there you can't go into the future until you identify where you are and then i help them build and find a path with self-discovery because it has to come from them but i know how to do that with the the questions and everything that i ask and lead them into where they need to go where they want to go and get them on their way so that they can get unstuck. Wow, so beautiful. And and I, I love I love the whole process of self-discovery because I believe that your personal development, right, the business is a direct reflection of your own personal development. So if you're currently not where you need to be, if you're currently not getting the results, then instead of just looking for outside circumstances of why it's not working maybe we have to go back and internalize what is currently not working within ourselves that will got us stuck in the first place absolutely absolutely and it's just discovery and it's so much more powerful when the person discovers it all i do is facilitate that journey yeah, and it, the self discovery comes from within, and that's when it makes an impact. That's when it becomes passion. That's when it becomes a goal. That's when it becomes a vision, because it came from them, from who they are. So that's that's the beautiful thing about coaching, and whether it's personal or in business, it, yeah. the journey's the same. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And Bella, what what are some of the um, the the impact, the results that you have seen that when you coach these people to go through that journey, what are some of the results that people have experienced after you know doing the work and, and finally create some clarity around their purpose and even their own identity, who they are and who they need to serve? I can maybe can you share some, some of these stories? Well, um, I know that I remember one time, this is a business one. I also have a personal personal one, but you know. I was asked to coach an executive who who was now in an HR situation. And the bottom line was the person didn't know how to connect with the employees and they got a lot of complaints. And now that, you know, these complaints have to be addressed. Well, I, when I got to the to the room, you know, we were coaching, you know, the, the this person, a, a, a high level executive cried, you know, was crying because how did he get into how did he get into this position? Yeah. He's now being audited by HR because all of these employees are complaining, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can relate to this. Either they're on the employee side where, you know what, I'm not getting along with my boss, or maybe you're a boss that the employees aren't connecting with. Well, at some point, something happens if you're working for a corporation, right? So we went through the coaching, we identified, you know, first thing, the community, you know, first thing, you know, the current state, how did, how did this happen, right? Because you can't fix something that you don't know how it happened. Then you coach them and, you know, what along the, I don't have a lot of time to go into the coaching process, but the bottom line was that, you know, this was, uh, it, it took time that we, you know, <clears throat> identified, like, for example, the communication style, you know, what the company policies were and things, because all of that, had, it, it's a big picture. You know, you have to include a lot of things, of yeah. the vision and the goals of the organization. But the person's personal leadership style is what I worked on. And at the very end, when we, you know, when we left, it was a completely different scenario. Again, you have to gain trust because it, no one trusted you. So it takes time. But a lot of it is just shifting becoming self-aware of people because people you know a lot of supervisors don't understand this they come in they have these great titles people that follow you just because you have a title you're not really a leader but when you can motivate and engage people to want to do what you're asking them to do to 
build in their recommendations because they're the ones that have and deal with the customers. They're the ones that have the answers and you're working together, then you're going to have a great relationship. And this is where it's going to affect your productivity and your outcomes, you know? So there's just, I have many stories, but a lot of it is, is just, it, you know, it starts with the individual. It starts with self. It starts, starts with self-awareness and it starts with being trainable because when you're willing to train and to develop yourself and become a new person when there, we all have areas of improvements. I do, you know, but when yeah. you're willing to get that, then people are much more forgiving. Yeah. And they'll, they'll help you when you, they know that you're changing and you've yeah. got a new outlook and you've got this new purpose and this new vision. Beautiful. Yeah, I I, I 100% agree uh, because the development process is a journey, but I think that growth happens when you just open yourself up to development. When when you understand that there may be some things that you haven't learned yet, but you can learn them by partnering up with a coach like yourself or actually to have a mentor or somebody that can teach you the way if you if you just remain open when the brain is open like a parachute right that that's where the the growth and the growth and the the evolution happens so i i think that for 2020 right to make this our most successful year yet i think that that's a great and an excellent advice uh bella just to to remain open and understand that there may be some things that you haven't learned yet if you're currently not hitting your numbers if you're currently not where you want to be and and I, I would would you agree that that the best thing that you could do right now is to surround yourself with the people that can actually teach you the right tools or the right way of thinking that will take you there just to remain open and and being able to do the work absolutely you know investing in uh, people i when I talk to people about investing and hiring a coach or getting a mentor or whatever, you know, start somewhere. Okay. Read self-development books. There's so many things that you can do for free, but there's also a lot you can do by hiring someone to help you. Cause that also helps you launch you way ahead of, you know, where you need to be. But one of the things that does help is, is having a coach, having a coach and making sure that, you know, you're working with that coach to get you where you want to be. Beautiful. Bella, um, we always like to do something for our community, right? A lot of people in our audiences, they are in business and they're currently looking to get to that next level. Or we have people that are actually thinking of starting a business and finally putting some, some passion into their own projects rather than to build somebody else's dream. Now, if there is, so we always like to give back to the community. Is there a way that, that, that we can contribute to the community is there potentially some time that we can make available that if people want to connect with you based on your story and based on your teachings that that you maybe have some time available to to create some clarity for the community what do you think well i think that one of the greatest things that people can do is just take that first step to their self-development um you know when it comes to the community i totally believe in giving back to the community you can volunteer your time it, and it's not only just volunteering your time you're helping others you're you're gaining skills you're meeting people you're networking that's not why you do it you do it because you want to help others and you want to give back to the community but i've i've always learned that when you give you always receive always and if you go in there with your whole heart and you're helping people, you're helping our community. Like right now, I just got a letter from the food bank because, I, you know, I, I help the community as well. And, you know, so they gave me a letter of how many, you know, meals I've contributed to the community. But you know what? It's, it's all about helping others. It's all about helping the community. Never look at it. What am I going to get out of this? Always look at it as how am I going to go in there and add value to people? How am I going to be someone who's going to help others and everything else falls into place? You know, maybe that person is not going to be the one to help you later, but there's always, always, I believe in the, the universe. It, it's just, it, it's, it's the cause and effect. You will always have someone else in your life when you need that moment for somebody to come and help you. So always give, give. And when you do that, it is such a fulfilling 
fulfilling destiny that you're going to have because you're always going to have someone come and help you when you need it. That's just the way the universe works. That's the way God works. So I believe that always giving, you know, right now, I know it's hard times and it's, 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 um, you know, it's difficult for some people and I totally understand that, you know, but uh, it's also, what are you doing right now? Well, if you are waiting, what are you doing? Are you developing, developing your skills, your talents, creating things, getting new ideas? Maybe you want to start a new business. This is the time to do it. Do all the research. Get ready. You know, get ready because this is going to end. This too shall pass. It's going to end. So the great thing to do right now is get ready for it. Get ready so when the, this ends, you'll already have your your platform. You'll have everything researched. You'll be ready to go. And you will be able to just flow in where you need to be and not wait for this to be over. There's things you can be doing now. Beautiful. So, so powerful. And Bella, lastly, uh, if people want to connect with you, how can they find you? How can they get in touch with Bella Cruz? Well, uh, I have a new book coming out, Accountability Performance. Uh, it's a coaching tool, uh, high performance coaching tool for supervisors uh, that want to build personal account accountability with uh, and connect with their employees. It has the do's and don'ts of what to do for an accountable leader. It has seven principles. It also has questions that you can, you can ask yourself to assess where you are in your accountability process. And it has something that most people do not do they do not have in their corporations and that's an accountability model to help guide employees to to be accountable so what i'd like to do now if you you know i'd like to give everyone be, for being on this show a complimentary gift of my first chapter so if they'll go to accountabilityperformance.com they'll get the first chapter of the book beautiful and our team is here so we will definitely take notes so guys there you have it go and grab that chapter i think that's so generous of you bella and i i'm personally gonna go and 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 read it i i love high performance coaching um so go and take advantage of this phenomenal gift guys and if you have questions make sure that you reach out to bella and 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 let her know where you are and how bella can potentially help you to get into that next level um now bella i there's one more thing that i always like to ask from our guest if you would be able to give one piece of advice to make 2020 this final month and a half or so that we have left to make this the best year ever what would you say to our community well i want to say I'd, I'd like to say you know I'm, my platform is leadership that I'd like to ask people to be humble and look at their leadership style. And leadership doesn't mean you have to have a title. What kind of leader are you at home? What kind of leader are you in your community? What kind of leader are you at work? If you are in a leadership position, which supervisor are you? Are you the one that employees are going and, and, and asking to be fired because they don't like working for you? Or you're somebody that people want to work with. And so no matter where you are in life, you're a leader. You're a leader. You are leading people. You are making an influence in somebody's life, whether it's your children, you know, your spouse, your partners at work, your employees. You are always a leader. So what type of leader are you? Be humble, be willing to learn, you know, always grow, do self-development. And all of this is to help others. There are people on their knees praying today that they meet somebody like you to help them with what you've done in your life, what you're great at, and also with what you've gone through in your life. Beautiful, beautiful set. Thank you so much, Bella. We really appreciate your time. Very generous. Uh, there's so much value and so many lessons today. So really appreciate you. And to our community, there you have it. We promise you a very special episode today of accountability and leadership. But take Bella's lessons uh, to heart and assess yourself. If you want to go to the next level, then evaluate yourself. If you're currently giving, if you're serving other people and take a deep dive into your own leadership style, how do you connect with people? Now tune in with us next week at the same time, the same place for another phenomenal episode of the entrepreneur speaker series. And uh, to our honored guest today, Bella Cruz, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. 
and I hope that uh, we can get to do this again sometime in the near future. Yes, my book's going to be coming out soon. Maybe I can come back with the book and we can talk a little bit about the book. That would be awesome, Rob. Absolutely. All right. Have a phenomenal week, guys, and I will see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye.